Okay, so now what I'm going to go over is uh, the HTML settings for Photoshop. In case you come in here and you design your layout in Photoshop and you say, well, I want Photoshop to output the page for me already marked up with HTML and, and whatever, whatever. Uh, so what I've done, I've just gone back, turned my layer styles off, and renamed all of my slices here, as you can see. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much where we left off before we created our rollover effects. Uh, so once I've got everything sliced up and named the way I want it and, you know, all done like that, I'll go File, uh, Save for Web and Devices. And then, of course, I'll select my format for my slices that I want to use, which is already set up. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then I'll hit Save. Now from here, uh, I have a save as type, and before we only did images only, and we used the default settings, and we only did user slices. This is what we used before, and that gave us the images folder with our images inside. So this time we're going to do the HTML and images, we want both. And instead of default settings, what I want to do is come down here to other. And what that's going to do is open up the output settings dialog box, which is right here monitor. And let me kind of quickly go over this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to record this all the way through, even if it's more than 10 minutes, and then I'm going to break it up into different uh, videos that you guys can watch. So somewhere in there you'll have a short one at the end, I imagine. Alright, so we're looking at default settings here. We have th uh, basically four options. Custom, background image, the default settings, and the XHTML settings. Uh, we're just going to go with custom for right now. Under each one of these particular settings, we have this drop-down menu that we can alter at any given point. So we're just going to start at the top with the HTML settings. Now, you're probably looking at this thinking, well, what is all of this? What does all this have to do with anything? What Photoshop is going to do is create an HTML page. And you can adjust the settings for the HTML output that Photoshop creates you have an option here that says output XHTML and you'll see the little pop-up generate XHTML 1.0 transitional compliant code what that means is that you basically what it is is you have two types of language you have HTML the hypertext markup language and then you have XHTML the extensible hypertext hypertext markup language if I leave this box unchecked then all of these options down here are adjustable as well as these down here they're all adjustable I can change any one of them. And the reason for that is because with just plain HTML, my tag case, for my HTML tags, can be any one of these options. It can be uppercase, and then they give you an example with the body tag. The body tag is all in uppercase letters. It can be mixed case with a capital B and the rest of the letters, you know, in lowercase. Or the tag can be all lowercase letters. With HTML 4.01, the tag case does not matter. You can use you know, uppercase for the opening tag and lowercase for the closing tag, and it'll still work. You can use uppercase for the opening tag, mixed case for the closing tag, or you know, any combination of these for your tags, and it'll be just fine. It's not going to matter. Same with the attribute case. The attribute case can be uppercase. There's an example with the row span attribute for a, 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 a table row tag. There's the mixed case. Uh, capital R and a capital S. There's your mixed case with initial lower. This is also known as camel casing. We have, you know, the first letter lowercase uh, of the first word, and then the first letter uppercase of the second word, and then the third, the first letter uppercase of the third word, and so on and so forth. It's called camel casing because you go low, then high, then low, then high, then low, then high, like upside camel. Or you can just do lowercase. Yeah, you have all these options available to you with HTML. I can indent my lines uh, a number of spaces or by tabs, either way. Uh, my line endings I can set up for Mac, Windows, or Unix, being, I believe Mac uses the character turn, Windows is the line feed, and I think Unix uses the line feed as well, I'm not sure. Uh, there's character encoding, whether I want to use uh, you know, the, the standard Western character encoding, I can use Mac Roman, or use the Unicode UTF-8, just leave it as automatic. Uh, as far as my coding goes, I can tell it to include comments if I want. I can always add the alt attribute to my image tags, to my images 
if I want to. I can always quote attributes because in HTML 4.01 you can either quote the attribute value or not quote the attribute value. Uh, I can set it up to close all the tags no matter no matter what. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, zero margins for the body tag that you know we'll, we'll talk about that later on when we get into CFC, CSS in Dreamweaver. Um, that's the HTML output. If I say, well, I don't want to do HTML, I want something that's a little more uh, strict or a little more, you know, standard-based, then I will output XHTML. And when I check this box, you'll notice that now my tag case and attribute case have been grayed out, as well as all these options down here at the bottom are also grayed out. And the reason is because with XHTML, it follows a more standard coding practice. And by that I mean the tag case and the attribute case are automatically set to lowercase. You can't change it. Because with XHTML, your tags and your attributes have to be lowercase. They absolutely have to be. As well as uh, you know your, your alt attribute, that's going to be included. It's always going to quote your attributes because with XHTML, all your attribute values have to be quoted. All your tags have to be closed as well with XHTML. XHTML is a variant of XML, while HTML is a variant of SGML. So there's a difference. And with XML, you have certain practices that you have to follow. You don't have a choice. And one of those, or, or several of those, are to use lowercase tags and lowercase attributes, and to quote all of your attributes, and to close all of your tags. Those are a must for XHTML. So with all that being said, we want to output XHTML just for the sake of ease of readability and following standard compliance. So that's what we're going to leave it at with, with our HTML setting. And this is what I suggest you do I mean, if you're going to do this. Check the output XHTML box and just leave the rest alone. Okay? All right, let's go on to the next one. Slices. This is the settings for our slices. You'll see you'll have two slice output options. For some reason, Photoshop by default makes a web design bad practice, a web design don't know, and that is to generate a table output for its slices. Now you may not know what I'm talking about or whatever, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this the way it is, save this out as a table based layout, come back and change it to generate CSS, explain this a little more in detail when I do that and then resave it out as a CSS and then you'll see the difference. We'll look at the source code and you'll see the difference. Okay, um, so we we're going to work with a table. Uh, we've got, you have empty cells. Um, it specifies how to treat empty non-image cells in the HTML table. Uh, of course with the, with you have a GIF uh, or the uh, image file along with the width and height. Uh, this is for your table data cells. These are your, your table cells. Their width and height are automatically set to automatic, so that they fill automatically. You can uh, set it always or never. So we can, uh, you know, I have to go over this. Too, I'm, I'm hesitant to even go over this because this is not what you want to use. And then you have spacer cells, which are basically with it. It's, they're self-explanatory. They're, they're spacer cells. They they fill gaps. They're just empty cells with nothing in them, and they they fill the space. All right. <clears throat> default naming. Uh, default slice naming. Okay. Um, when we were naming our slices a few videos ago, uh, we looked at how the slice got its name uh, by default. And we talked about, you know, the slices were named vector test underscore zero one, vector test underscore zero two, and so on and so on and so forth. And the reason they get that is because in my output settings, I have it set up by default. This is just the default that Photoshop comes with. It starts off with the document name. And, and I can take this drop down menu and I have all kinds of options that I can use to name my slices. I'm not going to change anything but you can see uh, it starts with a document name and then it adds an underscore. Of course I can change that to either you know, a hyphen or a space or whatever. You know. And then it's going to add the layer name or the slice number and that's where we had as the example my file underscore zero one. And that's what we had. It was vector test. Because here's our file name, vector test. We have vector test underscore zero one, zero two, zero three. So if you don't like the way that's named, if you don't like the way they're named, you can uh, come in here and change it and make it, you know, something different. 
However, if you say, well, I don't want it to name it anything at all, and I come in here and I just say none, none, and none, you're still going to get, for some reason, an underscore. <laughs> so, it's going to name it something. So, let's see if I can put that back. So, I want to change it to underscore, and then I have to go here, slice number 010203. Okay, so that's slices. Like I said, we're going to leave this at generate table, and I'll show you that. Then I'll come back, change it to generate CSS.